Hello, my wealthy wife, fam, and friends. This is Ms. Sophia, author of Wealthy Wife, Meeting, Dating, and Man Rich Men, as well as the founder of the Wealthy Wife Academy and the founder of the Wealthy Wife Muse Preparatory School, and of course, your godmother of affluent romance. How are you doing today, wealthy wife, fam, and friends? All right, can you believe? Because as of, of today, today is December 19th, 2022. That's the day I'm recording this audio slash video. That 2022 is almost over. We are less than a week away from Christmas. We are less than two weeks away from the beginning of a brand new year. Amazing, right? How has 2022 been for you thus far? What are the top three things you're most excited about that you've accomplished? What have you come accomplished this year that has you going? Yes. I did that. <laughs> And I'm asking this because that's the energy. Hang on one second. That I, one second. That is the energy that I desire you to carry into 2023. What are you most proud of? What's, what makes you giddy when you think about it? What makes you smile? What do you desire for 2023? You know, I'm thinking about this because... I know I've mentioned in different audios because I don't go out on I don't go out on New Year's Eve. That's one of those things I do not do. I stay home and just do my own. I have my own special ceremonies and rituals that I do to you know celebrate the completion of a twelve month cycle basically and to usher in the energy of the beginning of a new one. You know with ideal with ideas and you know things I'm looking to enjoy in the following year. Twenty twenty two was all about love. I know I've mentioned this before. It was about loving, learning how to love yourself, love others, let them go. Some Because we can love people and still release them from our lives. Because the goal is to honor people in whatever position in life choices they're making because they're actively making those choices. We honor them in those positions. But if it's not matching up to our desires and our energy, we're allowed to let them, let them go. Also, learning how to love yourself enough to Make those adjustments and releases if as needed. Learning how to love yourself enough to allow people to come into your world that actually are going to benefit you and elevate you and that you pour into as well. It was about learning self, self-wisdom, purging, releasing, letting go. I know this has been a year that has been beating up on people mentally, emotionally, and spiritually because I've been working, once again, mostly with private clients this year. You know, I've had a couple group things go on throughout the year, but mostly private clients has been 2022. And, ooh, goodness gracious. A lot of releasing, epiphanies, realizations, new new way of thinking, new things to celebrate. I've got goddaughters that have gotten married this year. I've got goddaughters that have got engaged this year. I received an amazing voice message from one of my goddaughters in reference to some changes in her life um, that I was just thrilled to hear because her story, which I'm not going to share, I'm going to share a couple things she shared with me. Um, just, she is such a perfect example of what I've been sharing with you guys here on this YouTube channel for the longest through the master classes, through the online academy courses, the private tutoring that about, about the power of being amused. She's a perfect example because in what she was sharing with me, the gentleman that she is currently involved with, that sounds like she, that it sounds like they're walk, they'll be walking down the aisle here they're moving toward you know getting married but it was so funny because this gentleman went searching for her uh, I'm just I'm just put it this way this is somebody that she had met she was kind of something had happened and it was, she was kind of like Meh, it's not working she walked away from him not anything crazy or bad. It was just something. She's like, just, you know, wasn't meshing up energetically for her. So she was like, you know what? I'm going to just walk away from this and go on about my business, on about my life. This man went in search of her through social media, searching for her, found her, reintroduced himself to her. She was like, you'll, she sees a picture of him. They do a voice, I guess, a voice call together. She's like, you look awfully familiar. He reminds her where they actually originally had met. She's like, oh, okay. And explained to him basically why she you know, cut ties with him prior to. This man told her, essentially, you're my wife. 
not crazy stalker kind of shit, not at all, but just like in the reference of the fact that she, whatever whatever it transpired in the fir- in her first meeting, he realized her beauty, her personality, her energy, her essence, that was a woman that he desired to have in his life as his life partner, as his wife. And she is just living her life, doing her thing, enjoying herself, working herself, because she's been working herself. She's been with me, you know, the wealthy wife teachings and everything for, for, for you know, a couple of years. And um, it might be a little longer than a couple of years, but just working on self, loving self, honoring self, getting rid of the things which no longer served her, pers- her personally, you know, elevating her emotional, mental, physical, you know, spiritual state of being. Loving herself, honoring her personal brand of beauty. It's in the essence of her loving herself, being herself, that this man, this man found her and discovered that he had met. I said it before, when a man, men, most men know, I won't say every single man knows, but most men know when they've met their wife. And he told her this and he takes care of her. He goes, you are my wife. You are my responsibility. I, is my, it is my, my pleasure to pour into you, to do for you, to take care of you. And she's so sweet because she was saying how, you know, she had never thought about getting married because she, as like most people had not seen a good example of a happy marriage or a happy long-term relationship, thought marriage was a bad idea. I had to laugh when she said that, by the way, it's like marriage was a bad idea. And here she is, here she is going, oh my gosh, it is possible. It is possible to be loved and cherished by a man that truly loves and cherishes you honors you, treats you beautifully, treats her beautifully, treats her family beautifully, her friends, this man. And she's just, she's so happy. She's so happy. This is what happens when you finally say yes to living the life you desire and be open to receive love. She was able to release whatever baggage that was inside of her brain, her energy field about marriage and long-term relationships. Because remember, she had told me that she thought the idea of marriage was, she thought it was a bad idea. She's like, bad, bad idea. And here she sits, planning a wedding. Just saying. Yes. This is what happens when you get out of your own way and learn how to say yes. First, learn yourself, whether you are three, who are you, what do you desire in your whys, learn you, love you, proclaim what you desire, because we're going to talk about this as well today, and allow yourself to be present in your life. And then allow life to pour itself into you and bring you beautiful, happy surprises that you are literally ready to say yes to. So once again, I know she's going to hear this audio. Congratulations. I'm thrilled. Like I said, I'm not going to tell them everything you share with me. I just want to give a smidgen, just a a smidgen. Because I've been, this is what I've been receiving information from God daughters for the past. I get stuff throughout the year, you know, uh, in announcements about engagements, weddings, you know, marriages that happen. But it's like toward the end of the year, I've been receiving more, almost like on a weekly basis. When my God daughters are contacting me that I may not have spoke to for a hot minute. Uh, what they've been doing because we may have spoke like for a hot minute just updating me what's going on thank you you know oh my gosh i've got to share this with you i love it so thank you thank you thank you thank you so i'm going to ask you what do you desire because for me because next year once again is a highly spiritual year and i've mentioned before that at the end of every year i always receive three words three words that become the theme for the year this year's words were clarity, intention, clarity, being intentional or intention and discernment. Those are the three main words. A couple of them was kind of float around it, but those are the three main words for this year. Now they will carry into next year as well, but I just received like all three words for, for what's going to be for 2023. We'll not give you all of them today, but I will tell you the top, the first one that came in and it was called is frequency. Frequency. Let me explain it. We think in terms of everything's right now. We keep talking about law of attraction, law of vibration, blah, blah, blah. 
which is important because your vibration is what creates your energy that attracts to you what you're going to attract. If your energy is running beautifully, is happy, is elevated, you're going to attract beautiful, happy, elevated situations and experiences. If your energy is all mucked up and, you know, just ugh, you're going to attract ugh. Law of attraction is just that. It's attraction. It's like a magnet. Whatever you put out there, you're going to pull to you. That's why I say it's so important to understand the words that come out of your mouth and, and pay attention to your thoughts and who you're allowing to speak over your life and what you're watching and pouring your attention into. That this You must be intentional. And you must guard. This is so important. You must guard your energy. Not to the point that you're pulling back and fearful, but to the point that you have, you're conscious about what you're doing and you're wise. Because... This has been up till now. Next year is a number seven. This year is a number six. Two plus two plus two is six. Next year is two plus two plus three is seven equals seven. It's a highly spiritual year. So the vibration is on steroids to the point that you now can tap into and truly pull things to you that you desire. Once again, got to be conscious and aware of what you're doing in your wise. Because it's either going to accelerate what's great in your life or it's going to accelerate what's not so great in your life. You have the power. You're the one who's sitting in the driver's seat of your life. You have the power, okay? So frequency, let me explain frequency to you. Think about your, your radio in your car. And let's say we wanna to listen to some jazz music. And in your town, jazz music is on 97.5. You're not gonna hear jazz music on 97.3. You're not gonna hear jazz music on 107.1. You must be specific and type in or click whatever button you have that is automatically saved, 97.5. That's precise. You know, and, 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 and it's the location is precise because if you go out of the range of where the 97, where the jazz music is playing, you start to, it starts to fade, it goes away, or you gets, gets, gets static, or it just disappears once you're out of the range of it. Because now you're no longer being precise. You have not, you're not in the precise location that 97.5, you know, equals jazz music in your area. That's the same thing for your life next year. You must be precise. It's no longer about just being like, ooh, ooh, hoping and wishing. Once again, I told you guys, that is so gone. Also, it's about looking outside of yourself, trying to find validation or trying to find satisfaction. No, this is about you. You, if you desire to truly be living the life that you that you desire, not trying to copy somebody else's life, <clears throat> excuse me, not trying to do whatever outside of you, but truly doing the inner work, being honest with self. So that you can finally allow yourself to say yes to the things that you truly know will add joy to your life. Or you may not even know will add joy to your life, but you'd love to experience it at least. Then this is the time that you want to really start thinking about it. As we start winding down this year to begin setting yourself up for what's going to be part of your majorly happy process for next year. I'm going to use the example of getting married. Because I'm in a position now where I'm finally ready to say yes. Yeah. I laugh because my friends are like, really? I'm like, yes. I love long-term relationships. I said it beforehand. I love being in long-term relationships. My thing in reference to actual, you know, doing the covenant for marriage, because I've been in long-term relationships, like I said, I've said before, 10 years, seven years. Adore them. Wonderful experiences. They were not my lifetime person. I'm thankful for the relationships. I mean that in all sincerity. I'm thankful for the relationships. In those relationships, I had a wonderful time course it wasn't everything it wasn't perfect you know we had our moments our issues whatever and they ended for the reasons that they ended because once again sometimes you do outgrow people or they outgrow you it happens but I learned so much about myself and how to be in long-term relationships and how to really love and cherish a man communication skills how to really be present with him how to build with a man beautiful experiences and then because my last relationship was going on my father was still alive. And when this cancer came back, I was still dating. Because I've had I've seen the question a couple of times, just comments that people will make. Because I told you guys, I don't tend to read some of the comments that come through. I appreciate them that when you guys leave them, because the very first ones you leave, I do I do see they email them to me. So I do see those, but I don't see tend to see what comes after them sometimes. Uh, periodically something may pop up. But I know I've seen periodically someone will say, you know what, 
who am I to be teaching women, you know, wealthy wife or people to get married, blah, 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 because I, I, I officially am not married at the moment. I'm single. And I laugh when I see those comments because I'm like, you don't know me. And it usually comes from somebody I'm sure has never held down a relationship, a relationship longer than 2.5 seconds. But I'm like, whatever. I can care less. That doesn't bother me because I know for a fact that I, I, know, I know what I'm doing. I know how to be in relationships. I know how to teach how to be in relationship. I know how to be present with a man. I know how to build with a man. And now I'm finally ready for my lifetime person. Because up until now, for those that may be new to my Miss Sophia channel, and people have asked me, you know, why I'm still single, because I've had the question asked. I go, because in my life, in the past few years, my father, when his cancer hit, was terminally ill. And I lived with my father. I had, the, I had the honor and the privilege to spend the last years of my father's life with him. That is time I would trade, I wouldn't trade for anything. Nothing, no way, shape or form. I walked away from a long-term relationship because at the point in time, he and I just, it was, it was, it was, it was winding down anyway, but I realized I was, I had no desire to keep putting energy into trying to fix something when I'm looking at my father thinking, you know what, I'd rather pour the energy into him, be there to make his life as, as, as elevated and happy and beautiful as possible because I knew we were moving into final days of his life. So last thing on mind was romance when I ended that long-term relationship. Like I said, I spent the last year of my father's life with him. I was there the day I was with him when he passed. Of course, once he passed, that was a whole process because anyone who's ever lost someone that you love, I mean, you truly, truly love, how that hits you, how that feels, oh God, there are no words to describe, describe that. It's just, it's like a punch in the gut, to put it mildly. <clears throat> so the last thing I'm thinking about at that point in time, obviously, is romance. Not happening. Wasn't the last thing on my mind. Then the grieving process. And while I still miss him, it doesn't hurt the way it hurt back then, obviously. And then the whole process, you know, of other things you have to do, was, especially when there's a parent that passes and all the, just there's so much stuff that goes on. And then moving. And then moving again. Because I left, I was staying with him, he passed, condo, whatever, had to move. Um, moved into a different situation, was there for like a year, and then finally moved to Vegas. Got to Vegas, end of 2019. Still grieving my father because he passed back in the um, middle of the year in, 20, in 2018. Finally get out here thinking, you know what? New beginnings, fresh start. Okay. Okay, this 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 will help. This this will help. <laughs> and then 2020 happens. I'm like, are you kidding me? I was like, really? Because I'm thinking, yes, I can, you know, just just start to go out, start, you know, just, just, just changing up my vibration, my energy, and just, you know, just start getting out, meeting some new people, having some new experiences. 2020 happens. Then 20, the, the chaos of 2021, things start to finally balance out a bit in 2022. So now I'm sitting here thinking, okay, starting to go out, starting to meet people. I said, you know, starting to date some, because I was, you know, just, you know, finally starting to feel again, like, okay, Okay, I can. This will be great. Thinking in terms of <clears throat> relationship. Now I'm sitting with myself again. I'm focusing on myself again. Like you know what? When I, I told you guys, I asked myself the same questions I ask you. Who am I? Because I'm always evolving. What do I desire? Am I wise? And my desire is a husband. I am ready to be a wife. Meaning the covenant. Of marriage. I was like, okay. And the reason I'm sharing this because here's my thing. I've said before, I could have been married numerous times over the years. It is never the lack of opportunity that has kept me away from marriage. I've had plenty of proposals from some incredible men, but I had no desire at that time to be a wife. 
And those men, while they were wonderful men, I knew that they weren't going to be the right match for me. Because my thing is this, it, it's not just about the money. Because some of you will get married just because he's got money and then be miserable for the rest of your damn life or until he leaves you or you leave him. Mm -mm. Marriage to me is so valuable and so precious and so important. The time comes that I become the wife. That's my lifetime person. I take that covenant very, very, very much to heart. That is something to me, this is my personal opinion, that I'm not moving in and out of that covenant. I'm going to be in a position that when that person comes in the statement you guys heard in one of the videos I did, audios I did on resting in your femininity, I am happily married to the perfect man for me. I am happily married to the perfect man for me. One more time, I am happily married to the perfect man for me. That is a powerful statement. And that's the statement that I stand on because I know me, I'm learning me, I'm evolving. I've had, like I said, the experiences I've had prior to the time comes when I have met my husband. I'm, you know, I've officially married. When they met him, we're doing through the courtship, we're dating, we're learning each other. He has, like I said, I'm in, been, I'm in preparation for him and he is out there somewhere in preparation for me because I know the qualities of the man that I desire. I've learned that over the course of the years of dating, in my relationships, through my friendships, so for anyone who's ever asked what gives me the right to teach what I teach, well, first and foremost, you don't have the right to determine whether I can or cannot teach it because you don't know me. I know what I do. I'm incredibly good at what I do because I've been studying this stuff for many years. I live through, I live my talk and I have plenty of goddaughters who have benefited from the information and the education that they've learned with me because they've done the work, they've taken the information, they follow the guidelines that I offer them. And it's not something that happens overnight. You're not gonna unlearn all your bad habits and all of your old teaching and mindset overnight. This is something that takes years to get yourself in a position that you're willing to receive, and especially if you're looking to marry a rich or wealthy man. You cannot take a poverty or middle-class mindset into a wealthy or rich or wealthy marriage. Not somebody who's already made that shift over to a wealthy mindset. Now, you better take that into a relationship with a man who's rich, who hasn't even worked out his details in reference to money. Because most times when you come out of that poverty and middle-class mindset, we're being taught that it's never enough, that it's hard, it's difficult, it's a struggle, rich people are bad. You're taught all these things about money that to keep you stuck in the system, so to speak, to keep you as a worker being and thinking about lack all the time. There's not enough, there's not enough, there's not enough. Or, oh, if I get this, something bad's going to happen. Or, or just all the other worries and concerns that come into the fact that once again, information out there is being taught that, you know, you have to look a certain way to attract the affluent, rich or wealthy man. You got to be a certain way. You got to be a, a certain body size. There's so much bullshit out there. I'm calling it the way I call it. So much nonsense out there that if you are allowing yourself to be influenced by it, you're never going to reach the goal of becoming a wealthy wife, happily so, with a man who treats you beautifully. Because you're going to be coming in with this poverty mindset, this hustle and grind mindset, with this mindset that's going to just create all kind of chaos in your life. So, and I say that the goddaughters who have worked with me and that are thriving and enjoying this lifestyle is because we have spent the time unlearning the qualities, the conditioning, and everything that would just has that just fights. There, it has this just, just, it's just all about just pushing and shoving and fighting and trying to drag them back into, you know, the hole in the abyss with the rest of the people who will never elevate out of that poverty and middle class mindset. I can talk about it. I come out of the middle class. I know the mindset of my parents. I love my parents. I love, love, love their ancestors now. I love my parents. I learned many great things with my parents. Money wasn't one of them. That mindset, my father and I would still have conversations when he was alive <clears throat> about the fact that he thought wealthy people were bad people. Well, you know this or that, just blah, 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 because of once again, the propaganda and the nonsense. And I'm telling him, I go, dad, not every wealthy person is a, is a horrible, I go, dad, I, I go, my guy friends are wealthy men. I mean, rich, wealthy, high, 
I go, these are the people that I, these are the men that I know. These are, these are my acquaintanceships and my friendships. These are the men that I date. I go there, I go, are there assholes amongst them? Of course there are, because that's just people being people. I go, but the things that they do are, I go, are they ruthless in business? Yes, they are. Yes, yes, they are. But they have to be. They have to be. Because I watch how they interact. With, I used to love that. I used to love watching how they interact with people. With each other, because they were pretty much an equal st uh, financial status, They there was no competition. There was like this camaraderie. It was a beautiful thing to watch. But anybody trying to come at them inappropriately that was not at their level, so to speak, or was inappropriate, because I think I shared a story one time about there's a gentleman that did not like uh, that was came into their group that they knew him also a very a wealthy individual who wasn't particularly fond of melanated people. I don't think it was just melanated people. I just think it was just certain type, whatever he perceived as whatever. But the gentleman took offense to me being, you know, a part of this group. And they were, they weren't happy with him. I'll never forget that. I'm just using this as an example of sometimes they can, there can be assholes in any group because they're just people are people. But I remember how they, they literally looked at him and said, because he was like, you know, if she stays, I'm not staying. And they're like, then go. They're like, we're good. We're good. Because you know what? She's welcome here. This is our friend. We love her. Um, and we definitely prefer her presence to yours. So what are you going to do? And that was, the gentleman looked at me, looked at them, because they were serious. There was six of them, and, you know, one of him, and of course me. And he grudgingly sat down. But, you know, but, and, and he, you know, he stayed, he wound up, you know, getting over himself and then finally loosened up and realized that, you know what, to get over himself, because once again, these men liked me, loved me, appreciated me, honored me for a reason. And they were the ones who invited me into the friend group. I didn't put myself into their group. They brought me in. Be, and here's why I'm sharing this story. It's because of my how I speak, how I talk. I'm open-minded. I love to be, how I spoke, should I say. I love to be taught. I enjoyed their company. I enjoyed them. I adored them. Because I love being around great men. But the mindset to sit with them, I had to cultivate. So you guys, I've been doing this. I've been at this for decades. And when I first came into the world of Wealthy Wife, because Wealthy Wife is my world, I created Wealthy Wife. And if you read my book, you know my story. I came into the world after the rich and wealthy dating as a single mom. Because I've also seen that sometimes in the comments. You know, why would anybody want a, want a mom a woman with children? They do. My children have been, matter of fact, have been people that when they found out I was a mom, I've had men that want to marry me because, I, because they want to be part of a family. They're like, if you are... How they put it? Because no one ever met my children unless I was literally, literally in a relationship with them. So most people I dated, because I date, nothing else is going on, just the dating. I, I will date multiple, I believe in multiple dating because you want to get to know people. So they would find out, you know, because I asked, if you ask me the question about my mom, I'm going I'm to tell you yes, because if you're somebody who wants to date someone with no children, you need to know up front that I have children so we don't waste each other's time. And we can move on. But I had men that I would meet and we'd go on a few dates and they got to know that I had children. And they're like, wow, you know, you're such a cool person. You're such a great person. You know, you got to be an amazing mom, blah, blah, blah. I was like, I love, I go and I tell my, you know, my children, I love them dearly. I go, no one meets them unless I am literally in a relationship. But I had men that literally wanted to marry me because I had the children. They're like, if you are, if you're as great a mom as you are a woman, then there is no reason why I would not want to have you as my wife. I'm like, that's lovely. And thank you for the compliment. I go, but I'm not looking to get married right now. And I'm sharing this because, as again, people trying to explain to you why you can't do something. That's a very limited mindset. That's also a very uh, prejudiced mindset. And this has nothing to do with, with ethnicity. This is just uh, mindsets and lifestyle prejudice because that's a thing too. And they're going to keep telling you why would somebody, well, just because it bothers you doesn't mean it bothers somebody else. So when I talk and speak in terms of changing that mindset, and the reason I've gone on this bit of a rant is the fact that 
if you're looking to move in the space after rich and wealthy dating, if you're looking to become a wealthy wife, if you're looking to become a wealthy woman, if you're looking for anything in reference to what might be out of your current quote unquote reality, you're going to need to do the work. You're going to need to work on self. You're going to need to let go of ideologies that no longer fit your personal growth. So let's go back to the statement, I am married to, my, you know, to the perfect man for me. That's how you must think. And uh, you're thinking of Miss Sophie, but how do I know if he's the right man for me? Are you the right person for you? Because this is what we're working on next year, just so you know. I'm going back to that. That's my focus for Wealthy Wife. The Wealthy Wife Academy, I'll probably start maybe bringing back some of the courses next next week because I'm actually setting up the layout a little different than it has been. I'm putting it into categories because the Wealthy Wife Academy, the preparatory school literally is to start working on your mindset, getting you back into thinking about yourself, learning yourself. The preparatory school is a great place to begin that type of learning and start getting that kind of self-wisdom. We touch a little bit on reference to communicating with men in that particular, in the, the preparatory school, but the academy is, that's the heavy hitter. Because this is where you're going to go to learn, go deeper into self-wisdom, the muse. You're going to learn the communication skills first for self with others. Because once again, if you're looking to become a wife, especially to a rich or wealthy man, you must know how to be a great networker. You must know how to be around a variety of people. Because you become part of a team. And I've mentioned this in other audios I've done, other videos I've done here. You're going to have access to people, individuals that your husband may not have access to. Because as the wife, you're going to meet other wives. And you're going, and hear me, wives, they're great networkers. Because we're going to be filling out things, sensing things, noticing things that the husband's not going to notice. Because he's so busy focusing on being doing things that a man does. When you know yourself, what your skill sets are, because we're going to be working on improving skill sets, enhancing, enhancing skill sets, so that when you finally meet your husband, you guys can sit down and have and brainstorm together on how to create what will be your relationship. Because what most people don't understand is when you come together with somebody to be in a relationship, you create a whole nother entity, like a whole nother being. You birth something. It's not a physical baby, but you birth a child, basically, which is your relationship. And it's between you and him to come together to learn how to co-parent, basically, that entity called your relationship. And as in, as all great parenting, you need to understand how to co-create, how to co-parent, how to cooperate, how to share ideologies back and forth, figure out which one's going to be best for the situation and the moment. It may be your idea or it may be his idea. You graciously are able to receive whatever, however it's going to work. You work out the details. You have great communication skills. You speak, you listen. You listen, you speak. You speak, you hear. It's a beautiful dance. And that's what helps that relationship baby, so to speak, grow and develop into something amazing. These dynasties that you see are not created by accident. Women need to know how to be present with rich and wealthy men. I was talking to a friend of mine uh, last night, another one of my one of my sisters last night, and she's in the, the field of, you know, affluent rich, actually rich and wealthy. She teaches things like, you know, trust and business and setups and you know how to really set yourself up to create legacies this is her specialty and she's in situations where she's watching these wives of wealthy men just get slaughtered when the relationships end because she doesn't the wife hasn't walked in there prepared she's doing the little floaty stuff i see you guys doing on instagram not instagram on social media well instagram is a social media where they see these pretty lifestyles and they make the assumption that, you know, oh, this is going to just be perfect. I'm going to just float through life and I'm going to be a princess and da, 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 until she's not. Because she's done nothing. Because she didn't go in with any wisdom. She didn't go in with any awareness that, you know what, this is his money, not yours. They'll gladly invest, invest, invest in it. Because once again, if you're his placeholder, not his game changer, 
when he's done with you because he's found out a new placeholder or he's met the game changer and you haven't been wise, you're going to get left with almost nothing. I've watched women get left with nothing. I've shared the stories on uh, here on YouTube where two years in a row I walked at, at my Starbucks. I'm sitting across the table at a table across from a woman who was bawling like her life had ended because her life had ended. She hadn't prepared for the possibility of her husband leaving her. Because the level of arrogance or just straight duh to not think about how he treated the person before you and then make the assumption that you're somehow going to be different. He's going to treat you differently. No, if the man, because I'll say this again, all money is not good money. But if you're in that situation, you should have the wisdom and the know-how to make sure, what does it call it, CYA, cover your ass? You just have the wisdom to do so. So that you're not left in a situation where you're at some man's mercy when the marriage ends. We'll be teaching how to take care of yourself, how to properly move through that side of wealthy relationships. See, wealthy wife is not just about meeting, dating, and marrying the rich man. It's also about you being in a relationship that is healthy and in a very, very way, emotionally, physically, and financially, spiritually as well. So that will be coming into the Wealthy Wife Academy next year as well. Because once again, I'm looking to work with women who are ready to become what I call the total package, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually. So the classes that will be coming up in the different categories of the Wealthy Wife Academy, the new and improved, so you upgraded Wealthy Wife Academy, communication, the muse, sex. We're going to be doing sex education over there as well. Yes, I said sex, S-E-X. Because once again, women desire these affluent, rich, and wealthy relationships, and they think they're going to just treat this man like they treat some average dude. Not happening. And what gets it with women sometimes is they want these monogamous, him to be monogamous, but then you don't want to, you don't want to learn how to be the proper lover to him. Make that make sense for me because it makes zero sense to me. This is a relationship. The goal is to last a lifetime. We're talking marriage right now. Now, marriage for you may be, you know, like I said, you may be like me where there's a long-term relationship that does not involve the state marriage license because once again, like I said, most, most wealthy people do not involve the state in their, in their process. They're very married, very, very married because marriage is a relationship and a covenant that you create between you and this person. It's an agreement that you take before other people and have witnesses to you know, basically see and say, yes, these two people have come together to create this covenant between each other. Has nothing to do with the state marriage license. That's a business document, just so you know. You can create your own documents between you and your spouse. So that's just saying, you want to learn how to be the wealthy wife. I'm just giving you some clues on how to make it happen with the right people to make it happen properly. Make sure you're set up properly. Make sure you have the right conversations. Make sure you understand how to select your particular team of attorneys. Because we talk about the prenups and post-numps as well. Like I said, we're not talking about the whole romantic rosy glass thing. We're talking about how to create wealthy relationships that protect everybody concerned that take out any most issues and potential problems before the marriage ever happens so that those lines of communication are open so that you guys are, know how to be present with each other now back to sex we're going to talk about sex how to please a man how to learn a man how to speak to a man not just talking about talking dirty to a man. We can talk about that too if you want to. But I'm just saying how to speak to him, how to hear him, how to express your needs to him. Because when I hear that most women have never had an orgasm, it was like 80% last time I saw the number. It would be higher than that. But I think 80%, somewhere around 80% or higher of women who've never had an orgasm before with a partner. I, when I saw that, I thought they were lying, that particular study. That particular research study, I'm like, I'm thinking they have to be lying. They have to be lying. And then I talk to women and discover they probably weren't. Because most women do not enjoy sex because one, they don't understand their bodies. 
they're ashamed of their bodies, they have issues with their bodies, they don't feel attractive for whatever reason, um, they have no skills as how to communicate their needs to their, their particular person, they just go with the flow. Ugh. No. No. If you're looking, especially if you're looking to go into a lifetime relationship with somebody, you need to understand how to enjoy that sexual relationship with your person. Plus, the energy of sex is the energy of creation. Do you understand the what you can create in that energy with your person? Oh my gosh, you can birth even additional ideas that make you even more affluent rich and wealthy and add to your joy and create experiences. You two can come together and create even more because that's the energy of creation. We'll be discussing that in the academy as well. Don't know if that's going to be an immediate class that comes up, but that will be a class that will be under the sex education segment of Wealthy Wife Academy. How to honor your personal brand of beauty. How to love and adore and cherish self, how to speak to others because people learn how to treat you by the example that you set. What else is going to be there? I think those are the main, that's not all the topics. We're going to talk about spirituality, how to, you know, your health and well being will be over there as well. Because once again, how you feel about you will reflect on how you treat your body temple. I gave you guys the mantra, which I'm going to probably do it start out next to my next audio I do. I'll, I'll do the mantra again in reference to I am sacred. You know, I am, what is, I am sacred, I am the altar and the temple, I am holy. I forget the rest of it off the top of my head. But I'm just saying, also we're going to be discussing this because how you care for your body. What are you feeding your body? What are you putting on your body? What are you doing? How are you resting on your femininity? Women out here have still are having so many crazy health problems because you're doing too much. You're doing too much. If you're looking to go into a long-term relationship, if your goal is to be married and you truly want to be in a position where you can pull back and really be in that feminine energy, it's not about push, 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 grind, 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 hustle, 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 hustle. That's masculine. We can we do action steps as a woman. Femininity is about action steps as well, but we function better when we're in a space of relaxation and flowing so we can actually pay attention to the information that comes in and then delegate the tasks that need to be done. Now, sometimes we need to learn the task ourselves so we can express how for it to we can express how we desire for it to be delegated, but it's not about us going toe for toe with anybody. We are the spiritual heads of our household we are also we set the direction of our households so that's going to be part of the wealth wealth academy as well you know i think about the queen esther story that pops up all over the place people love the queen esther story it's a great story it really is most folks really once again do not know everything that probably went into that you know, what was it? I'm to forget. It was what, 12 months of her, of her time being spent to prepare her to finally meet the king, which probably, just judging from the time when I read, when I read the story, I'm going to go back and read it again. It probably took longer than a year for her to get in front of the king, just so you know. I'm going to say, I, I guesstimated probably about 18 months, so she probably had an extra six months of training and coaching and teaching before her turn came to meet him because they brought so many women in as potential brides for him. But the cultivation, just the little snippets that you get, in her story, you know, she was fed a special diet. You know, she was, her body was pampered in a special way. She was prepared and prepped. And the preparation, just so you know, wasn't just her special diet and, you know, the frankincense and her oils. And, you know, I'm sure she was learning how to, you know, whatever. She was exercising and stretching her body out. She probably was learning some, some special, you know, tantra stuff and sexual things as well. Because once again, she's about to marry the king. And even though he may have a house full of people they can have access to, she's still the queen. So she's going to be priority in reference to, as you know, the lover skills. So I'm sure she was learning some of that as well. How to speak to the king, how to be present with the king, how to, you know, learn this man. Because I'm sure it was years 
before she, you know, before the setup for her to save her people, so to speak, happened, she had to spend years learning this man. Because based upon that story, uh, he wasn't the smartest man at times. He could have a little too much alcohol in him. He started doing things and saying things and expecting things that were a tad unrealistic and unfair and potentially embarrassing for his wives. That's how the first one got exiled. You know, he's asking her to show up, to show off her beauty because he's drunk and he wants to show her off to his friends. And what I heard was, now we don't know if this is, this is, this is the truth or not, I got to read the story again, that he wanted to present herself in all her natural beauty, meaning clothes minus clothing. And she was like, oh no, 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 no. She preserved her dignity because in his drunken state, he wasn't thinking about her dignity. He was showing off for the boys. But I'm gathering what saved her life as opposed to her being executed like his best friend most likely wanted to have happened to the first wife was the fact that when he finally sobered up, that king finally sobered up and realized what he did, he was like, oh, crap. But he had to save face because once again, his friend was correct. If, you know, the queen disobeyed the king, then all these wives would be like just going haywire on going ham on their husbands. So in his wisdom... Realizing his idiotic move, basically, he simply exiled her, which I'm sure she was saying, thank you. Deuces, I'm out. So that's the first wife. So Esther has to come in now knowing how to be that diplomat, knowing how to be the strategist. So it wasn't just about, you know, the special diet and the frankincense and myrrh oils for her skin. That stuff was important. Because once again, she's being reared to be a wealthy woman and a wealthy wife. But it's also about her education in addition to. And I'm sharing with you guys because if your goal is to be the rich and wealthy wife, you need deeper education too. That's why I'm here. Excuse me. So that if you run into a situation that you're going to have to not save a nation of people perhaps, but to save a situation, you will know how excuse me, because you have studied, know how to study and pay attention to your husband and also the people around him. Because that best friend in his ear, I don't remember the king's name, her husband's name, but that, that best friend in his ear, he was, he was, oh my gosh, he was diabolical. Of course he paid for, he, his car meant, oh God, he lost his head, I recall. When everything finally came to, because she, because once again, she, she had to master. She had to not only understand how to, how to navigate her husband, the king, but she also had to know how to navigate that best friend who has so much sway over her husband. Ladies, that's called marriage. You need to, especially once again, if you're going into a world of affluent, going into a world of rich and wealthy, Affluence has is a, is a lower level of that. It has its own specialty as well. But if you're going if you're going for the for the brass ring, so to speak, and you want to become that wealthy wife and learn how to and you want the longevity of the relationship, these are skill sets that you're going to need to know. These are skill sets that I can I, I definitely know how to teach and cultivate. Along with additional people, I'll be bringing in to assist you as well as time goes on. But anyway, I just wanted to share this because next year is a powerful year. Where do you plan on dialing in your frequency? What do you desire? Do you desire to be a wife? And I mean this, is that one of your, is that, is that a goal? Is that an honest and true goal for you? If it's yes, what are you willing to learn? What are you willing to do to learn how to be the wife? I mean, truly, truly be a wife, especially in the realms of rich and wealthy. Because I say it again, it's not the same as middle class. It's not the same. It's, it's a whole nother world. Whole nother world. And you also got to decide where you want to plug into what type of affluent, rich and wealthy lifestyle you desire. Because every category has its own special skill sets and its own special way of doing things. Old money is one way. New money is one. Now, there's different categories in old money, different categories in new money. There's a ton of categories to affluent, rich and wealthy dating and marriages. So this is why I keep saying it's so important to know yourself to know where it is you desire to go into it.
Are you more traditional? Okay. Are you a tad more eclectic like me? Because I'm eclectic. Absolutely. But I know how to function, but I'm a chameleon. I can function in any category you stick me in. I can be a present with old money, new money, international money, you name it. I have the capacity to be present wherever I am because I have the experience of being in multiple places with multiple with various types of people. I can guide you through that. I have the skill set to guide you through once you have figured out where it is you desire to be. This is about a woman's wisdom. This is about you. So if your desire is to become a wife, then pay attention. You've got new classes coming for the academy. Like I said, the classes are coming. If you have not begun to do the work to build the foundation of you, I'm going to once again recommend that you sign up for the Wealthy Wife Preparatory School, Wealthy Wife Muse Preparatory School. It's a great place, like I said, to get your initial start, to get them once again start doing the preparation work, to start working on the mindset, to start preparing you for the courses that will be coming online very soon for the academy, because the academy courses are going to definitely be more intense. So that's all for now. We'll talk soon. Bye bye.